What I have in front of me here are the patch notes for the December update for Back for Blood. Turtle Rock accidentally posted these, <laughs> but then everybody saw it and took images and spread it like wildfire before they were able to take it down. And then eventually Turtle Rock was like, okay, fine, you guys saw it. At least just spoiler alert it before you go and let people know what's in it. So spoiler alert, here is the December update, and we're going to go through all of it. <laughs> And I'm going to try to move quickly because if you go ahead and take a look at just how big this patch is, it's huge. It's huge. So, there are so many changes. Everything you know about the game is about to change. Just about. And everything I've posted about the game is not necessarily accurate anymore. So, yay me. So, let's work through it here. And this is going to be on the 16th of December. That's when the update comes out. It's going to be out at 10 a.m. PST, according to Turtle Rock's Twitter. Right here is the official post for that. A reminder, 2021 update, December 16th, 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is going to be, what, 1 p.m. Eastern? So let's start cranking through this because there's so much. And I'm going to try to just let you know what it is, but also give you some thoughts as quickly as possible. So, new features, offline campaign with progression. It's here, congratulations. New supply lines, roving merchants, time-limited track that provides new unlocks to spend supply points on. So, to me, that might have something to do with the holiday event if it's time-limited. So, get to it, get your farming in. New card type, burn cards. A new card type added that's available through the roving merchant supply lines. This card type can be played in each safe room to gain temporary effects like instant healing, currency boosts, and increasing resist resistances, and more. I have no idea really how that's going to play out because every safe room you can play a card. So maybe it's a card that keeps repeating itself per safe room? That might be a thing. Holiday seasonal event. Holiday decorations to Fort Hope in the firing range. Unlockable seasonal character skins, weapon skins. I mean, yay! Unlockable seasonal stuff. I'm happy about that. I don't. What do you guys think? Would you rather have it be like exclusive and it's only here during the holiday and you can only unlock it during the holiday kind of like overwatch does it or would you want to have it all the time let me know what you think new non-burn cards basically these are just the same thing as surplus pouches or box of bags except it's for the utility slot so you can increase your quick slot by one or two or your team quick slot this is going to be a really big deal when we get later in the patch notes but spoiler alert what's going to be happening is razor wire is no longer an offensive item it is now a utility item. It's going to be in the quick slot, so more value onto Carly in that perspective. And honestly, there's a lot more going on with the utility slot, but that's one of the big things is that Razor Wire isn't an offensive item. It is now a utility item or a quick slot item. Written practice area, so you can actually see what the written feel like and play like, which will be good if you want to learn a little bit more about their mechanics or if you want to practice for Swarm. Um, Ultra-wide improvements, bots that... Ooh, here's another big one. Bots that accompany the player in the campaign are now randomized. You're not going to default to Walker, Holly, Evangelo, and what was it, Mom? You're going to get whoever, which is going to stink for my recording because I kind of relied on knowing who I was going to get, but still, it's nice. Um, notable bug fixes. Oh, thank God. So they are fixing the duping of frag grenades in the game. So a big problem in nightmare mode is everybody cheats right now. That's just the way it is. And thankfully, they aren't going to be able to do that anymore, which makes me very happy. So I might be able to actually play quick play and not deal with cheaters, which will be great. Another one, fix an exploit that allowed... Oh, yeah, so other cheaters. This made it so that people can't duplicate their cards anymore. And on the topic of Nightmare, Nightmare is about to look a lot different. Veteran's about to look a lot different. Honestly, the whole game is about to look a lot different. It's going to be a lot easier. Overall, like completely. Everything about it is just going to feel a lot easier. So if you've been struggling or getting destroyed, the game's about to get a lot easier. So let's quickly go through this now, because there's, again... This is just so long. Actually, one really cool one here, this Twitch extension. So one of the things you can do when you watch the Twitch streams that we do, the link will be in the description, is you can name the written or name the mutations after yourself. It's like 10 bits or something, but it's only up in the top right-hand corner, so I could never really tell who it was. But now you're going to be able to have the name over the written. So if I take out a tall boy or something, or if a tall boy takes me out, I'll know who exactly did it because the name will be over the written head which would be a lot of fun anyway on to actual other things so developer note we made the following changes on pc to make the controls feel more snappy this was a big complaint with the november update that everything felt more sluggish when you tried moving around it was mainly a problem for people who were speed running they are the ones who noticed it the most everybody else all of us regular plebs we didn't really feel it that much but they're they're changing it back so players starts with max ammo at the beginning of a run which is makes sense they but they currently don't do that Cleaner hitboxes are now more accurate, reducing accidental friendly fire. So my guess is when you are shooting and somehow you 
hit your teammate who is behind you. <laughs> Might make it so that doesn't happen anymore. This is an interesting one. Healing efficiency now improves temp healing. So, pain meds are going to get a big buff from that. But what I'm not sure about, what I'm really not sure about, and we'll have to test it, is there are other things that cause temporary health in this game, like face your fears or Vanguard. If that gets better with healing efficiency, Melee has got something to be very excited about, or pretty much any close range person getting temporary health off of something else other than pain meds. Woo! -hoo -hoo! Or like pyro? Oh my lord. I'm very curious to see if that has anything to do with it. Bots now keep their existing inventory and upgrade their weapons with each map, which apparently they always had gray weapons. Chat. Bots are murderers. They kill everything so well. It is remarkable how good they are at taking things out. And if they were doing that with gray weapons, imagine if they have like green or blue or purple weapons now. Bots are going to be so easy to work with as long as they're not being dumb. Smoothed out player collision near ogre spawn points. Yeah, the ogre spawn points are kind of goofy sometimes. It's just these weird craters that you trip all over. Glad they're smoothing those out. Zwat achievements are now going to grant the Zwat team title, which is good. Ooh, here's another big one. Added an additional card to Acts 2 and 3. So currently in Act 1, you spawn with two cards on Nightmare. Um, three, I think, on Act 2-1, and then four on Act 3-1. And I guess we're just going to be getting another card, which will make it so your builds can come online faster. And this doesn't seem to be difficulty specific, so it is probably going to apply everywhere, which is just going to make these acts tremendously easier. A whole extra card. That's, that's remarkable. The jukebox can no longer be damaged after the last bus is loaded on Search and Rescue Barroom Blitz. Now, this will change it a little bit because... If the Ridden were to take out the jukebox after the final bus is loaded, what's going to happen is the Ridden are going to swarm you rather than continuing to go after the jukebox. So if the jukebox is still playing music, it will make it a lot easier to get to the Jeep. So this is basically a nerf on the difficulty on Barroom Blitz. Remaining research boxes will be highlighted on T5 now, which they already kind of are. If you spend enough time on T5, the locations of each box are pinged. Now it looks like they're going to be highlighted, so minor change. Waypoint gate objective. So I think what this means is people cheat on this level where they hop over the gate on Road to Hell. And I'm assuming that this is going to make it so they can't do that anymore. And then let's just start, cruise, start cruising through a few more of these that I think y'all will be interested in. Here's another big topic, which is the speed card updates. So let's just read the developer note. We noticed the use of speed running decks was creating tension between players as a single player would utilize the speed running deck to separate from the rest of their team and rush ahead to finish the level. We made the following changes to bring speed running more in line with the viability of other strategies and builds. That's a nice way of saying we tried to nerf speed cards. <laughs> now let's talk through what's happening here, what the overall net effect is going to be and how that's going to affect your matches. So let me try to explain what's going on with the speed thing here, because the speed thing has been quite a hot topic with this game. So let me try to explain the whole issue and really what the what the whole context is. So what's currently going on in the November patch is people notice that with speed cards, you can just run from A to B and skip the majority of this game and almost all of the difficulty associated with it. Speedrunning does have its own challenges, but overall, it is a substantially easier way to play the game than going slow play through Nightmare. I, I, I don't think that's debated. Now, the problem with that isn't people playing the game how they want to play it. If you want to speedrun, I think you should be able to go fast if you want to. Because you can do whatever you want with your game. The problem is that it is if one person on the four-player team decides they want to do that, it completely changes the game for the other three players in a way where they aren't even really playing anymore because if the speedrunner runs ahead the other three players don't really have anything to do because all of the mobs follow the speedrunner it, it, it kind of ruins the game for them if they wanted to play it so my guess is that they are trying to make it so that there's less incentive to be a speedrunner especially since another big problem with the speedrunning is a lot of people know that if you put a bunch of speed cards on and you skip past stuff it's a lot easier but they still suck at it <laughs> they're like really bad at it they're like oh i saw a youtuber do it and then they try it and they're terrible so what happens is the speedrunner runs ahead and then ruins the game for everybody else because they call every single horde that they can find they call all the sleepers and then <laughs> They die, and then all of that nonsense comes running back to the other three players. That's also another big problem. So these changes here, in my mind, are going to do a couple of things. 
but let's just read through them. So what they did was they reduced the speed on evasive action from 20 to 15. Fleet of Foot now goes down to 8%. It was 10% on move speed, but the damage resistance trade-off has increased. So it used to be minus 5% damage resistance. Now it's minus 7. So you're going to take more damage. Mad Dash stamina efficiency is now minus 40, was minus 30. So it's going to burn through your stam faster. Olympic Sprinter now has a bigger damage resistance trade-off was five now seven pep in your step is slower now rhythmic breathing this is interesting rhythmic breathing kind of got refactored here so rhythmic breathing used to give you 60 percent extra stamina but then it gave you minus 20 percent slow resistance now it's just a flat out plus 40 stamina which in my mind is a buff to rhythmic breathing because slow is the worst thing in this game you don't want to be slowed at all and on the topic of slowing run like hell was changed so before run like hell gave you a 15 percent speed boost now it's only 12 percent also, if you were hit when you were using Run Like Hell, that would reduce your accuracy by 20%, which who cares if you're just running by everything. What they did now is that Run Like Hell is going to no longer give you move speed if you get hit. So you're going to lose your 12% for three seconds. So you're just completely negating Run Like Hell if you get hit at all. Okay? Now, Speed Demon... The move speed was reduced from 6% to 4%. I think that's the SMG card. And then Stimulants no longer gives you move speed. I think that's the Pain Pills one. So, in my mind, what this does for the whole speed running thing going on in the community, in my mind, I think if you run into a speedrunner who is good at speed running, you would probably have a lot more respect for them because it is a much more challenging thing to do now. You have to be playing at a much more flawless level because if you get hit, then suddenly run like hell is not working anymore. And that's huge. That if, if you lose what 12% move speed, just poof, like that, you're probably going to get taken down by everything that's swarming you. So this is going to incentivize people playing really, really cleanly. What might also happen for a while is people are still going to try to speed run and they're not going to be that amazing at it. And they're going to <laughs> call a bunch of hordes. Ideally, since Nightmare is going to be getting a lot easier, maybe they won't feel like they have to speedrun. We'll see. I think the other thing that we might end up seeing is evasive action here. Evasive action, what this does is if you get hit for, what, 10 damage, you get a speed boost for a short period of time. I wouldn't be surprised if since Fleet of Foot is now minus 7 and Olympic Sprinter is now minus 7, where before they were minus 5, if people tried to stack negative damage resistance to proc evasive action anytime you get hit that way it cancels out the loss of run speed if you get hit when running run like hell wouldn't be surprised if people try it i don't know we'll see how it works out i do also think that speed cards are going to be a thing that they continually adjust don't ever think that anything in any of these patch notes is set in stone they will probably keep tinkering with things as time goes on to keep refining the game okay now on the topic of speed card updates, we have to talk about combat card updates because they did these in tandem. So they said that we received feedback that slow and steady combat wasn't as viable as other strategies like speedrunning. So we wanted to make it so that you have more fun shooting stuff and you can beat stuff up better. So let's see what they buffed. So cold brew coffee now plus 25% ADS speed, plus 25% swap speed, plus 25% use speed and plus 50% reload speed. This is an awesome sounding card. It takes, in my opinion, three really, really big parts of the game and gives you a buff. Weapon swap is huge if you run admin reload. Use speed is huge for, I don't know, everything. Reload speed is huge for everything. So that's a really, really nice looking card now. They, another thing they did here is they adjusted all of the bullet pen cards because there were three different damage tier cards, right? It was like silver bullets, large cow rounds, and then, I don't know, something else. And they combined all three of those, or no. And then they had each of those cards get better at bullet pen and get better at damage per tier. Now it seems like bullet pen is all on one card. And they also added other things here, so let's take a look. Combat training, remove the bullet pen. Instead, they added plus one bullet stumble and plus five melee stumble. So to me, that means per bullet. So not gonna be good on a sniper, but gonna be really good on like a vector or maybe something like a shotgun if each pellet counts. And plus five melee stumble doesn't really seem like a big deal to me. <laughs> Unless I were to scale with the multiplier of the weapon, like on a bat or something. Combat training. Now, plus 5% bullet damage and plus 25% stumble. That's huge. I'm a little confused, though, because this says plus 1 bullet stumble, and it also says plus 25% bullet stumble. I don't know. Now, this is part of where they probably took the patch notes down, because things there's some inconsistencies here. Not really sure why we have two lines for this. I'm not sure which one's real here. But 
plus 5% bullet damage, plus 25% bullet stumble chat. That is huge. That's basically since the bullet damage should affect your stumble capacity since it increases your damage. It's going to be 1.05 times 1.25, right? Because of the stumble. So you're basically getting a 31% stumble increase immediately. <laughs> which is... That's huge for so many reasons. One of which is that the stumble modifiers on Nightmare are going to be more forgiving. So ultimately, I did a bunch of math here off screen and, I, and you can actually see it here. What you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to stumble lock on Nightmare with a gray M1A. You're going to be able to stumble lock wretches, stingers, stalkers, and hawkers with just this card. And if glass cannon is going to get fixed to now provide stumble damage, which I think it's going to, I think it is. I'm not sure. Then just those two cards are going to let you stumble lock pretty much all the lower tier stuff on stumble HP perspective. And then if you find a green stumble, any if you find any stumble attachment, but a green stumble, then you'll also be able to stumble lock exploders on nightmare with a gray M1A. A gray M1A. It's like the worst gun in the game. <laughs> so... Uh, the stumble meta's coming, chat. I have a whole video on stumble. And that was hard mode stumble. This is going to get way easier. So if you aren't stumbling, you better start stumbling. This is this uh, this is already a meta card. Everybody's going to want to run this. Guaranteed. All right, let's keep cruising here. Energy drink. Stamina reduced to 15. Was 40%. Remove the damage resistance. Added weapon swap speed and move speed while firing. Slow resistance. Ooh, energy drink with slow resistance. It's only 10%. So we'll have to see how it feels. But still, it's nice that they're introducing the idea of slow resistance. Ooh, I love Highwayman. So Highwayman Tooltip update. Now it's going to be all secondary weapons. It used to only be pistols. Now it's going to include your Tech 9. It's going to include your Belgian. And the ammo chance drop is going to go up to 3%. It was 2%. And now it has a chance to spawn Molotovs. Which is great. So if you're running an infinite ammo build with ammo stash, Highwayman feels like a must pick now. Because your Tech 9 is going to help it. And then also you're going to spawn Mollies. And Mollies... I think Molotovs are kind of one of those things that people are sleeping on because they are good at almost everything other than crushers. So I think this is going to be huge and kind of really make you think a little bit different about the meta. Large cow rounds now, plus 7.5% bullet damage. And this card has all the bullet pen now, so plus 200% bullet pen. Also, it removed the penalty. And a theme that you'll see in this December patch is cards that had a negative attribute like minus five copper or minus 20 percent stamina efficiency that type of thing they got rid of a lot of that it's going to be the card does good things and good things only pick this card or maybe pick up other card that does even better things so I, I like that i like thinking of things from an opportunity cost perspective rather than going oh i lose this if i pick that i like thinking oh these are both awesome but man which one's more awesome all right line them up here is now changed what it does now is it increases your range fall off, your recoil control, your bullet pad, and ADS speed, and it's no longer required to have an AR. So line them up's gonna work on any weapon now, which is cool. Marathon Runner no longer disables sprint. So if you don't know what Marathon Runner does, what it does is if you typically walk backwards in this game, you are slower than if you walk forward, or if you walk sideways, you are slower than if you walk forward. Marathon Runner makes it so you are not getting those speed decreases if you go backwards or sideways but it came at the cost of not being able to sprint. Now, you you can pick Marathon Runner and you can go backwards super fast and you can go sideways super fast, but you can still sprint now too. So Marathon Runner, I was already enjoying Marathon Runner. A lot of people slept on it because of the sprint thing. I already thought it was really, really good. Now I think people are going to love it because it's going to give you so much speed. Honestly, speedrunners, take a look at Marathon Runner. That's probably really gonna help you. Now, I love the cards here, Mugger. Ammo chance increased to 3%. This is if you are meleeing. So if you are... You are going to have a chance to drop ammo at 3% rather than 2 But also, you're going to drop razor wire now, which is awesome. It's going to be so fun. Can you imagine? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I just thought of this. So a strat for T5 on Nightmare is to hold down the stairs. And part of how you hold down the stairs is you put razor wire on it. And if you are going to have a melee person trying to hold down the stairs, you are going to be able to continually get more and more razor wire that you can keep stacking behind you to provide a larger area of safety to back up in. And wow. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that before. That's huge. 
And since Blighted are getting fixed to not explode anymore once you kill them, that's going to be huge for melee as well. So if your economy is not looking so hot on some of these levels where you would typically want to have razor wire, this will give you a chance, if you're running melee, to kind of help fight back. Oh, that's so cool. Holy man, I didn't even think about that. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Anyway, sorry. Uh, Patient Hunter here is now going to get a stack per 0.75 seconds rather than one second. So it used to take three seconds for Patient Hunter to be at full stacks. Now it's going to take 2.25 seconds. Power Swap, you can't really stack it anymore. You could get like three or four stacks with it before if you tinkled it the right way. So now you're only going to get one stack out of it. So it's only going to be 20% rather than like 40 or 60% extra damage, which I think is good because <laughs> I made the card kind of broken before. Silver Bullet's got a big change. It still gives you plus 10% bullet damage, but now it doesn't do bullet pen. It added to the range fall off and its penalty was removed. So now you can just get boom, plus 10% bullet damage and you don't have to worry about losing copper anymore, which I think is a welcome addition for a lot of damage characters out there. Steady Aim now, ooh, this is interesting. Steady Aim now gives you recoil reduction and then also Tunnel Vision gives you weak spot damage increases over 2.25 seconds on each of these cards. So it seems like there's a bunch of cards that are providing bonuses to aiming down your sights, which I think is good because frankly, there was such a bonus to not running that. <laughs> like laser beam builds were, they just felt like more powerful versions of sniping in my opinion, because the mobility was so huge. But if you're going to really make it so your recoil reduction goes down or your weak spot damage goes up, I think that helps kind of balance the playing field a little bit. This is a big one. I don't know if it's enough, but it is a big one. So team ammo now also gives your whole team plus 1% increased damage. I don't think 1% is enough to make me spend 1500 on this. I think if it was like plus 2%. I'd be a little more interested in it. 3% might be greedy, but I think if it was plus 2%, then the whole team's doing 8% more damage. I don't think 1500 copper justifies a 4% damage increase. But it is cool that they're tinkering with it and giving you the idea of mm, maybe it is worth it. Or maybe just ammo is going to be a more fun way to play now that they're changing some of the ammo cards as well. We'll see. Well fed now removed the 20% stamina efficiency decrease. So I don't, I can't remember what well fed did. I think it gives your team health or something, but it came at a cost. They removed the cost. Now on to healing card updates. This is going to be big sad news for doc players, but also some really interesting news which i think doc players will like so fresh bandage is now going to heal you at the start of each level and it's going to increase the amount of trauma recovered which is cool but something that happened here where is experience dmt let's just start with experience dmt experience dmt what it used to do was give your whole team plus 20 percent health and what it would do is if you had any experience dmt procs on your character it would heal that amount of extra health off of your trauma at the end of the level but instead, it's not going to do that anymore. <laughs> so you're not going to heal a trauma off of experience DMT. But what you'll see here is that they are adding a free first aid cabinet charge to Nightmare. So typically on Nightmare, you don't get a free first aid cabinet. Well, you're going to get one now, similar to how veteran mode does. But veteran's going to have two after the December patch. So again, the whole game is getting easier. But yeah, experience DMT, I don't know if it really feels like a required card in a dock deck anymore. Anyway, let's keep going through these. Life insurance, this is an interesting thing. Life insurance lives were reduced to one opposed to two, and now it reduces your team's in-cap trauma by 15. It also removed the copper loss with life insurance. Um, eh. I mean, your team in-cap trauma, I think in-cap trauma is just a bonus amount of trauma that you receive if you go down. I don't know if 15% really is the most amazing thing in the world. It's not anywhere near as good as what Doc does, where Doc is just trauma resistance in general. This is specifically for in-cap trauma. All right, needs of the many. Health reduced to minus 10, what's minus 20%? So if it's minus 10%, that's very different than minus 10, not sure. If it's just minus 10 HP, we'll have to get more clarification on that because those, those can be very different things if you get HP beyond 100. Group therapy's heal was increased to eight, was five. That's a huge buff. That is a huge buff. If you look at that from a percentage standpoint, was it eight divided by five? That's like a, what? That's a huge buff. So group therapy might be more of a meta pick now because think if you use three bandages, suddenly everybody on the team is getting 24 HP out of that as opposed to 15. That's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Pep talk. Okay, here's my theory on pep talk chat. Pep talk now gives a three flat damage resistance from all sources while reviving and grants 10 health to the revive target. General card updates. 
So this is a bug fix because it used to be that cards like surplus pouches would continually stack up or share the wealth would continually stack up on your continues. So you could have seven grenades when you're only supposed to have like four off of surplus pouches. Not really sure why it was happening, but I think it was a bug and they're fixing it. So don't count on share the wealth giving you extra money anymore if you get wiped. All right, now on to some other changes here. Adrenaline fuel is going to be completely different. Before, this card would give you plus 100% stamina and minus 75% stamina regeneration. They're getting rid of all of that, and they're also changing how you get stamina off of it. So what it does now is every single time you kill something, you are going to get 7 stamina over 7 seconds, and it's going to stack up to 5 times. Currently, Adrenaline Fuel does not stack. In case you thought it did, it doesn't. So this is... I don't know if this is a buff or a nerf overall. It's just going to be a very different way to use it. I think what this is going to be really useful is on melee characters because you're going to be keep replenishing your stamina as you keep swiping. I think this will be really fun on Holly. Ammo Mule no longer disables support items. Oh, thank God. But it lowers your move speed by 5%, which in my mind makes sense because if you're carrying a lot of ammo, you probably move a little bit slower. I, I like that change because disabling support items always made me scoff at the card. Bounty Hunter updated the text to mention contributing team kills. Oh, okay. That should clear that up because people are always like, well, what if I, <laughs> what if I shoot the mutation, but I don't last hit it? Do I still get the effect? Well, apparently you do. So good. We talked about experience DMT, how it no longer heals trauma, but instead what it's going to do is the bonus health is going to only be 10% was 20%. And now it's going to increase your stam and stamina region by 10%. Um, in my mind, experience DMT isn't that big a deal anymore. And I probably am not going to run it. I don't think plus 10% stam, plus 10% stam region is really something I'd care about. And I don't really think the 10% health is either. Because, again, opportunity cost. Is this worth something else in my deck? Worth more than something else in my deck? <laughs> no. It's not. Not even a little bit. You would protect your team more and benefit your team more by running the stumble card than you would by this. You would protect and help your team out more by running an economy card. Because you would be able to increase the effectiveness of your support items or something with an upgrade experience emt immediately falls out of my deck with this i i just feel like there's no reason to use it it might help with your melee character they might like it but i don't know it, it, it feels like i don't don't want it anymore i could be wrong but just reading it energy bar stamina region increased to 30 percent was 20 oh that's nice Ooh, this is a big one hyper focused so they, they changed hyper focus a lot here so adjusted to have a minus 40% move speed penalty while shooting or melee attacking was before minus 75% ADS move speed. So if you're gym, you're going to like this because if you aim down sights, you're not going to be super slow anymore. If you are a melee character or a laser beams character, you're not going to like this because you're going to move much slower. You're not going to be able to chase stuff down and just obliterate it. So I'm going to have to drop this out of my laser beams deck or my, my marathon runner deck because part of how I did that was I ran Hellfire and I would just zip around with the tech nine. But I do think this will be really... I, I think it makes sense because basically what it allowed you to do was dodge the bad part of hyperfocus and hyperfocus is one of the most powerful cards in the game. And all you had to do was run melee or a laser beam build and suddenly hyperfocus negative side of it was non-existent. So it makes sense. Makes me sad for those characters, but it makes sense. All right, corruption card updates here. <laughs> okay, okay. I can't skip over this. Wooden armor no longer increases explosion damage. I don't think wooden armor... I don't think that's the part of wooden armor that I was worried about, honestly. <laughs> I think the part about wooden armor that I didn't like was the minus acid resistance and the minus fire resistance, especially since charred and blighted are so scary. But wooden armor got a buff, yay. <laughs> You know what they should do, chat? They should make a wooden helmet and have it be even worse. <laughs> Corruption cards will no longer appear at the start of an act. Yeah, that was rough. I, that started in the November update, but basically there would be breakers, ogres, hags on act 1-1 one one of Nightmare, and that was kind of tough to deal with. Hey, somebody followed. Also, the hag will no longer spawn with the fog corruption card. So, I don't know if... Does that just mean never? There's no longer a hag with the fog card, so you're not going to get double bosses anymore. So that'll be nice on Nightmare. Honestly, bosses weren't really the thing that were super, super tough on Nightmare. After you figured out bosses, they became pretty easy to deal with. The only thing that made a boss hard to deal with is if they spawned in a bad spot. So this will be nice for a lot of players who don't really know how to deal with bosses. I do agree that this will make it a lot easier. 
But the things that really make Nightmare hard, in my opinion, are like Tallboy Hordes <laughs> comboed up with a boss. The other thing is, and, and, and they talk about this, the other thing that makes Nightmare really hard is Roaming Hordes. Because there's a part of this game where after, I don't know, two or two and a half minutes, they throw like four special ridden at you. Roaming Hordes would overlap to the exact second with something like Tallboy Hordes. And suddenly, instead of getting four tall boys, you're getting four tall boys, but also getting four of something else. And then there's like eight things on your screen or six things on your screen, whatever the number was. That's what made it hard. Either way, it's all getting easier. So the fog's maximum density on the gloom and fog cards is lowered. Ooh, removed the breaker from all difficulties of bookworms. Okay, chat. Bookworms is the level where you have to repair the windows of the library. I think, back me up on this. There should not be the ability for anything to spawn in the library after you open or after you close up those windows. It does not make sense from a gosh dang story perspective that I just boarded up all these dang windows to make the library safe and then suddenly they start spawning in there with me. I don't care if it would ruin the difficulty and make it super easy. It's dumb. <laughs> Make it so you can't spawn anything in that stupid library, especially out of the safe room. What are you thinking? The safe room, the library, it's supposed to be safe, at least for that level, okay? The whole point of that part of the story is we boarded it up, we're cool in here, don't worry anymore, guys, and then suddenly stuff spawns on top of you. That's dumb. Fix it. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving here. Balance updates. Ooh, this will be interesting. So, all guns have the same aim assist. Okay, so aim assist stuff for the console players. That'll be nice for y'all. Um, Bird's health was reduced to one. It was 10, which makes it a lot easier for a lot of different things. So, Molotovs are probably going to take out birds now. So, I, in that video where I say they can't do it, well, they're going to be able to do it now. Um, birds will also be able to be taken out by something like a shotgun, like a gray shotgun that's only doing eight damage. That was part of the problem if you tried to take them with a shotgun because if they had 10 health and your bullets only do eight damage on the gray variant, well, suddenly they're... Like, an AA-12 is going to absolutely annihilate birds now. So, boom, 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 done. Um, flash grade damage was reduced to 1, was 5. Which would be really nice if you want to flashbang the ground to help get yourself out of something. You're not going to damage yourself as much. Also, the M16... Ooh, this is being really interesting. The M16 damage was increased to 16. It was 14. So, where this gets really, 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 really interesting is if you go to stati.net here. And you take a look at the weapons. So, if you take a look right here. The gray M16 does 14 damage, and it's a three-round burst, right? And then everything else... Oh, wow, it's actually matching the AK-47. What you'll see is the AK-47 scales much higher on its purple variant. The M16 doesn't scale as well. Now, what this is going to do to the M16... <coughs> is you see 14-14 here? Well, if you go ahead and you take a look at 14, and it goes up to, what, 18.6? So, what is that? 18.6, 18... .6, 18 <laughs> 6 divided by... Oops, 0.6 divided by 14. So basically, by the time it's purple, it gets a 32 or 33% buff, 32.8. So if the 16 is now going to get that 32.8%, what you'll see here is the M16 is now going to do 21.2 damage at a purple variant rather than 18.6. And it's a three round burst. So each three round burst is going to be doing 63 damage, where before 63, and what was it, 18.6? Before, it was only doing 55 or 56. So it's a little bit of a damage buff. In my mind, where this becomes really, really, really interesting is you got to take a look at how these cards function. Or not these cards, these guns. So the M16 is the assault rifle on speed. It's based around speed. The ranch rifle kind of gets this too. It gets speed upgrades. But the whole point of the M16 is you can zip around with it. Because if you see these plus icons here, Every single tier of an upgrade on M16 makes you move faster while firing. So, with that in mind, since the M16 is going to be doing a lot more damage now, it's going to be more in line. It's going to be closer to the AK-47. And if you counter in the three, round, if you factor in the three-round burst, it's going to outdo everything. But since it's going to make you super, super fast as it upgrades and it's going to do more damage, I think people are really going to start to like the M16. This is a nice buff for the M16. I'd say it's required. Because people kind of scoff at the M16 right now. Let's keep moving here. 
so the birds oh the m9s are also getting a buff as well which is really nice because those guns are like meh razor wire is now a quick slot item we already talked about this they fixed the mp5s where before their fire rate was not fast enough something was going goofy with them the 870 it says fire rate reduced to 0.4 <laughs> i think this is misleading i think what this means is the 870 is going to fire faster it's not going to fire slower okay i think the 870 got a fire rate buff not a debuff combat knife now increases the combat attack width so i really like this in my mind this means it's going to basically have the mean drunk effect so if you knife it might arc out a bit so combat knife i'm feeling it man combat knife metal let's go <laughs> especially since they're changing other things in the game combat knife if you have a full combat knife build that might actually be really good now <laughs> lightweight stocks now give you less move speed the lightweight stock blue variant is 7.5 it was 10 the purple variant is now 10 it was 15 which is in line with other speed changes they have nightmare and shooting range and fort hope oh okay so yeah they fixed some of the problems in the firing range where things are inconsistent now here's another big topic here is the balance updates this is probably one of the biggest things that they're changing in this game is the game is just going to be a lot easier now okay so let's let's talk through it basically what they wanted to do was make it so the jump from vet to nightmare wasn't so big the jump from recruit to veteran wasn't so big ultimately the way they went about doing that was making the whole game really easy in comparison to how it is now still going to be challenging but much much easier <laughs> so damage resistance on recruit is now higher currency so and all the continue bonuses so currency heal and trauma are all going to be a little more forgiving veteran is very very interesting to me these are some of the most interesting changes so sleepers are no longer going to call hordes on vet they're still going to call them on nightmare uh, i think it's going to be interesting that people's first experience with nightmare is going to be sleeper hordes and they never experienced it in recruit or vet is what it is player base damage increased to 120 percent so typically what would happen is let's say you have a gun that does 10 damage on recruit mode you get a 50 percent damage buff so your 10 damage gun would do 15. but then on vet and nightmare that 10 damage gun would do 10 damage now what it's going to do is your 10 damage gun on recruit is going to do 15 damage but on veteran now it's going to do 12 damage and on nightmare it's still going to do 10. so veterans getting kind of a 20 percent buff in a lot of different areas here your base health goes from 100 to 115 your base ammo capacity goes up by 20 percent your trauma heals are going to go up on a safe room now which is really interesting continue currency bonus went up continue heal bonus went up and you're going to get an additional first aid cabinet use so typically on vet you would only get one free first aid cabinet now you're getting two okay now nightmare nightmare has got nightmares huge changes so you had zero free first aid cabinet uses in nightmare before you would always have to spend the 400 copper now you get one so you're gonna have to decide on your team who needs it the most or some punk is just gonna try to steal it right away <laughs> we'll see how that goes <laughs> okay now this is a really big one this is probably the biggest thing in nightmare imo is these next couple of lines so in nightmare mode common before would do increased damage by 100 percent let's say common would hit you for four in veteran before well you would double that in nightmare mode so now it's eight but since they reduced that buff to 50 percent if a common hits you for four in vet instead of hitting you for eight in nightmare they're gonna hit you for six so this becomes a really big deal if you get swarmed you it's way more forgiving now you are going to be taking so much less damage if you are being sloppy so That'd be really nice for people playing nightmare another big one here is the special damage got reduced so it says reduced by 35 percent so it's either 40 percent now or it's 35 percent not sure how they meant this to be so same concept if you got hit for x amount of damage on vet well you would take 75 percent more damage on nightmare and now it says reduced by 35 percent so you're either going to be taking 40% more damage from a mutation now, or you're taking 35 if this is a typo. Either way, it's about 40%. So either way, you can be way more sloppy in Nightmare now. It's way more forgiving. Nightmare Extra Trauma in cap reduced to 5. And actually, so yeah, this is another thing that doesn't make a lot of sense. Extra in cap trauma reduced to 7. I think this is where they kind of want to refine the patch notes. There's some things that are a little goofy here. Here's a huge one. Reduce the Nightmare Stumble Resist on Nightmare to 25% was 40 
So typically, if you shot something, you would do stumble damage to it. And every creature has stumble HP. We've talked about this in a whole video about stumble before. But if you take a peek here on Staddy.net, you can kind of get an idea. So Stalkers have 30 stumble HP. Uh, Reekers have 100. Wretches have 60. Etc. Now, on Nightmare, you would take whatever stumble damage you did and you would multiply it by 0.6. So if you did, let's say, 50 stumble damage before... Well, if you were on Nightmare, you'd have to take that number and multiply by 0.6. So instead, you were only doing 30 stumble damage. So what they changed here is instead of that multiplier, it's going to be this one. So you'll take that 50 and you'll multiply by 0.75. And instead, you're doing 37.5 stumble instead of 30. So once your numbers start getting really big, this is a, this is a huge deal to help you stumble lock things. So doing all the math here, you'll be able to stumble lock pretty much any of the lower tier stumble HP things. Tall boys are going to be a little hard to touch and Reekers are going to be hard to touch, but anything other than that is going to be really easy to stumble now with just about nothing on your gun. You could run gray variants of everything and you're going to have a pretty easy time stumble locking the majority of creatures. Which is going to make it a lot easier. If you really understand the stumble HP thing, you're going to be a master at this game. I recommend watching the video I have on stumble HP and that is how to deal with stumbling when the game is really, really hard. You take those same principles and you apply them to the December patch, it's going to be a cakewalk. So, especially since they're adding a stumble card, <laughs> it's going to be really, really easy to deal with a lot of these mutations. As long as you know your fundamentals, you should be able to breeze through it, in my opinion. This is a huge one here, too. Now, this is more fixes, in my opinion, rather than changes. So, during endless hordes and back-to-back -back hordes, all horde special ridden are limited to two of a given type and a maximum of four, what, total special ridden? So, if you would get tallboy hordes or stinger hordes, sometimes you get, like, six of those things. You're like, oh my god! Well, now it's going to be limited to four. And instead of, <laughs> like, four stalkers, you're only going to be able to have two stalkers, because it's limited to two of a given type. They also made it. So the timed hordes have a longer minimum resume time. So something you could do to dodge hordes before is let's say a tall boy horde was coming and there was five seconds until the tall boy horde showed up. If you wanted to, you could alert something else by shooting an alarm door or by shooting birds. And that would cancel out the tall boy horde until the birds horde was done. And it would reset the tall boy horde timer to 30 seconds. So if it's at five seconds, well, it got reset to 30 seconds. Now it's going to go up to 60 seconds. So this is going to open up a strategy where you can consistently dodge a really scary looking horde like tallboy hordes or stinger hordes as long as you have something else that you're willing to eat like a bird horde or an alarm door horde. Okay. The roaming max count is now four. It was six. So this is going to make it so if you're cruising through the game and every once in a while you hear a bunch of special spawn even though you're just minding your own business. Well, there was able to be six of those things coming at you. Now there's only four. So that'll make things a lot easier as well. They reduce the chance for tall boy variants, <laughs> which I don't know how you feel about that. I'd be curious, but in my mind, that makes it harder because I think a lot more runs are ended by wretches and stingers and hawkers than they are by tall boys, but maybe that's not what the data says. Bruisers are easy to deal with. Crushers are easy to deal with. Tall boys, like the actual tall boy, those are the scary ones because they charge you. So either way, Gonna be way less tall boys and way more spitty boys. Increase the roaming minimum spawn distance to 30 meters and increase wander special. I don't know the difference between wander and roaming, honestly. Really what this means though is that there's gonna be less stuff spawning right on your face. It'll give you more time to feel it coming. Ultimately, the whole game is going to feel a lot easier come Thursday. If you've been getting destroyed, this might be your chance to finally check out Nightmare. Or if you've been getting destroyed on VET, you'll probably be able to have a lot more success. So something I want to talk about now is people are probably going to have concerns of the difficulty of the game. If it's going to feel too easy. And I want to give my thoughts on that since we do a lot of the really, really hard difficulty stuff on our Twitch streams. My thoughts on it are that this is a good change for the game. Because one of the realities right now of Nightmare Mode in Quick Play is... There are very, very, very few players playing anything beyond 1-1 one -one or 1-5. One and just about everybody you run into are people that have given up on playing it in a slow and steady way. And it's all people that are cheating, using duping, or they're all speedrunning it. There's, there's about zero people <laughs> who are just quick playing, trying to play the game as intended. Quote-unquote. 
I think by lowering the difficulty of it, this is going to open up the accessibility of the game mode and make it so that more people are incentivized to at least give it a shot, which I think is good for the overall health of the game. I also think that expectations play a really big part of this. And what I mean by that is people who play this game, a lot of them came from Left 4 Dead. And if your expectation of this game was Left 4 Dead style expectations in terms of difficulty, you're getting destroyed. <laughs> Left 4 Dead was a really, really easy game to play through. I hope that's not debated. Left 4 Dead was extremely simple compared to what Back 4 Blood throws at you. And if you were going into Back 4 Blood expecting a Left 4 Dead experience, it's been hard. Also, I don't think they branded the difficulties in a way that people expected. I think a lot of people nowadays go, oh, easy, normal, hard. Well, I play a lot of video games. I think I could handle hard mode. And then they go into Nightmare and they get trounced. <laughs> I think what they had to do at the beginning of all this was introduce Recruit as training. Like, very obviously, this is training mode. The game is easy at this difficulty. Let's go ahead and make that expectation. And then Veteran would be standard, which is, it's still hard. This is, if you did this, good job. This is the standard experience that we expected you to go through. And then Nightmare would be exponentially difficult extremely hard, almost impossible type of a vibe, because that's currently what it is. But the way it's presented is easy, normal, hard. So expectations, I think, play a lot into people's level of happiness in life. And if your expectations are not met or if they are challenged, that makes people upset. So with those two different things affecting people's expectations, I think what this allows them to do is go into that easy, normal, hard territory and then also introduce a new difficulty level because on the Back for Blood Trello, it says they're working on a new difficulty mode. Here, if you take a look here, it'll be right here. New difficulty mode. It's something they're actively working on. Now, in my mind, there is no, there's no way that they're going to introduce something in between Nightmare and Vet. So what I think this allows them to do is go, okay, we have easy, normal, hard now. Now, this allows us to create an opportunity where we can go, this is almost impossible. Watch out, warning, hold on to your butts, press okay before you even go into this game mode so you can acknowledge how hard this is type of a vibe. Because that's kind of what nightmare mode is right now. But this gives them an opportunity to brand it that way. Expectations mean so much. Like I, <laughs> Psychology and how people perceive things and like dopamine has so much to do with video gaming. <laughs> This allows the expectations to be properly established. And I think that's good for the game overall. That's my thoughts on it. I think all of these changes to nerf the difficulty are good for the game's long-term health. Even if like someone like myself, who really, really likes Nightmare Mode as it currently is, is going to lose some of that for now, I think overall, long-term of the game, it's a good choice. That's my thoughts. That's the swing point thought on it. Okay, now let's keep moving here. Basically, they made it so a lot of this stuff's a lot easier. Ridden AI updates. So, Blight and Ridden... Oh, wait. Blighted Ridden no longer deal instant explosion damage when they die. Oh, yeah. The Blighted. The commons, they're... Yeah, they're not going to explode on you anymore, which is going to make melee a lot easier. <laughs> Special Ridden's defense against bullet penetration to weak spots has been reduced. Um, Special Ridden's defense against bullet pen to weak spots has been reduced. So... I don't know if that means that bullet pen through a weak spot was harder to get through on a Special Ridden. That's kind of what it sounds like. Or if you shoot through a common and hit a special ridden, if there was a de defense with that. Either way, they're changing it. Sleepers are going to have more accurately connected targets. Oh, no! You know how many times I accidentally miss a sleeper? <laughs> well, not going to have that luxury anymore. Uh-oh. Tall boys and bruisers hitboxes are more accurate and their weak spots are easier to hit. So this will make it so you can hit them from the front easier if you are precise. Ooh, so tall boys are going to be easier to deal with. Okay, cool. Tall boy and smasher overhead attacks. Ooh. They have their radius reduced, but that also means that there was something called the Smasher, which is probably the Bruiser. I think Smasher might have been their old name. There's also Vomiter down here. Yeah, I'm assuming this is the Wretch. Must be using some old names from the Beta or something, or Alpha. <laughs> Exploder's Explosion Radius is now visible to the Ridden player, which would be nice if you're playing Swarm and you're playing the Exploder. 
The wretches now have their effective range reduced, and they also ramp up a little bit differently. So the way this is going to work out is if a wretch starts spitting at you, it's going to be easier to dodge them. But they're going to chase you a little bit longer, is how I read this. The hag's health was reduced. Oh, didn't they just buff the health? They must have been like, nope, too much. They also made the weak spot multiplier larger on the hag. Oh, wow. So it's just going to be way easier to take the hag down in general. Okay. They made it so the stinger's projectile cooldown while perched is increased. Yeah, so currently if a stinger's on a wall, it goes pit, 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 pit. They're going to make it so they don't do that anymore. I guess there's going to be a cooldown. <laughs> so stingers will be a lot easier to deal with. And they also made it so the hawkers are easier to deal with. So apparently... If a hawker spits at you and they miss, well, they can just spit again right away. Now there's going to be cooldowns of eight seconds, so hawkers are going to be easier to deal with. And there's a bunch of swarm updates. Um, I'm not really big on swarm right now, so I don't really have a whole lot to say about this. But if you're into swarm, here, take a look, pause the video, read it, like it, hate it, do whatever you like. The UI UX updates, the ones that's really interesting to me. Oh, you can duplicate your decks in deck manager now? Oh my god, I hope I can duplicate from training over to campaign. That'd be really nice. This is a huge one, though. So cleaners being pursued by the hag will now see a corresponding screen effect. So sometimes the hag switches who they're chasing. So this would be really nice to know who the hag is currently chasing. That is huge. That's huge. Anything else in here that's really, really in interesting to me? Subtitles are now off by default. So to me, what that means is turn them on because if the subtitles are off, you don't get to get the intel as to if there's a tall boy around you or if there's a wretch around you or really whatever mutation or if the hag is berserking. You're going to want to have your subtitles on because these give you so much intel as to what's happening around you. Anything else that's cool? And they fixed a bunch of bugs here. And instead of going over all of the different bugs, I will just go ahead and leave a link to this image if you want to go look at it. But there's some really interesting things that they fixed that I didn't even realize were bugs. Like with rousing speech and stuff like that. It's really fun. <laughs> and then we already talked about the Twitch extension. So, sorry for talking forever and a half about all this, but as you can see, it was a forever and a half list of notes. Update is coming out on the 16th. We will be playing it. It comes out at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And if you have any questions or if you have any comments or if you have any thoughts, please post them in the comments down below. We stream just about every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. I'd love to see you guys over there. And if you've enjoyed these videos or you got anything out of them, please consider subscribing. So, thank you all for being here. I appreciate you all. And I'll see you on patch day. How about that? Talk to you later, chat. Bye.